In this video, we're covering nine underrated light burn tricks that'll save you time, make your projects easier, or even unlock new options that you've never seen before. It's taken me years to find some of the features we're about to cover, but once you know they exist, most of these tools only take a few seconds to start using. So whether you're brand new to light burn or you've been using it for years, I think you'll find a few new things to try. And to demonstrate the nine tricks, we're gonna be building out this little display with my logo on it because I wanna stick that right over there <laughs> on the front of my laser in order to use as the background in future videos. So with all that said, let's get into it. So one of the first steps we need to take for this project is to get our logo design centered on top of our circle outline. And there's a bunch of different ways you can do this, but one of the fastest and easiest ways is a little trick that I think often gets missed, and that is to click on the logo design and then hold the Option key on a Mac. On a PC, this would be the Alt button. And then you can click and drag, and it gives you these snap lines that are basically snapping it to different points on your other shape. And to get it perfectly centered, you just want to get both lines and then release the mouse button and then we're good to go. And if you wanna get really fancy, you can also hold that same key, so the Option or Alt key, plus the Shift key at the same time, and then if you do that and click on your logo design, this will now give you eight different points along basically a pie slice to snap your shape to, which could be useful for more complex designs, but for what we're doing here, it's more simple, so I'm just going to use that centering and release, and we're gonna be ready to move on. But given that we need this project to be a fairly precise size in order for it to fit just right over that text on the front of my laser, you might be wondering how I'm doing the dimensions for the red and the blue part of the project. Well, the blue part is pretty straightforward. I just measured over that text and got a dimension of about 6.75 inches to cover everything. And then I just created the circle and punched in that number here in the text box. But what you might not know is that these boxes are actually also calculators. And that brings me to trick number two. So we already know that we want our external outline to be 6.75 inches. But if we were to use that same number for our logo in the middle, this would actually create a problem, right? Because we're gonna be getting overlap between that design and the external outline. Line, which is gonna cut things off and look pretty bad. And so we need to add some buffer room. And let's just say for this example, we know that the right amount of buffer room to put on the outside is about two thirds of an inch. Now, I don't know about you, but without a calculator, I cannot do this very quickly in my head to take two thirds out of 6.75. But luckily, Lightburn has built this in. And so I can just simply type in minus two divided by three and hit enter and it's doing that math for me. But now that we have everything resized and centered, we actually have another problem here that you might not have noticed, and that is that my logo is actually flipped. It's like a mirror image of itself, and this actually happened because I first started this design on another laser that has a different device origin, and then when I moved to my current laser that I'm gonna run this on, things flipped as a result because of the origin. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, no worries, I have a video that explains this in detail. I'll link to it in the description for you to watch after this one. But anyway, there is a very easy solution and that is just to click on this shape here and to mirror flip it. And there's a really easy way to do this using keyboard shortcuts. So I'm just gonna hit the H key and that's immediately going to flip this and give me the orientation I need. And that's just one of eight keyboard shortcuts that I think almost everyone should be using in Lightburn because they save a lot of time, but they're also really easy to remember. So let me just do a quick speed round to run you through the other seven. So the second shortcut is the V key for vertical flip instead of the H key for horizontal flip. And then outside of that, there are also alignment keys. And so if I were to select my two shapes, I could align top with the T key, I could align bottom with the B key, I could align left with the L key, or I could align right with the R key. As you can see, these are pretty easy to remember. And last but not least, the seventh and eighth keyboard shortcuts are for rotating your shapes. So when I have my shape selected, if I hit the period key, it's going to rotate clockwise in 90 degree increments. And if I hit the comma key, it's going to rotate counterclockwise in the same 90 degree increments. So now before we get into trick number four, we need to recenter our design here so that we're actually ready to run this project later. And the next thing I wanna talk about is happening over here in the cuts and layers. Uh, first, I just have a little thing to clean up here. I need to change our red layer here to line. It's set to fill just because I wanted to make it easier to see here in the demonstrations. But now I need it to be aligned so that we can actually cut this out. And the next thing I wanna show you over here on the layers is actually trick number four. And it is a new feature that's come to version 2.0 of of light burn, and that's that you can right click on any of your layers to display several different options. And I think these bottom two in particular are very helpful. So this one allows you to select everything that is in this current layer, which you can imagine probably that this 
would be really useful when you have a lot of different shapes and elements on a layer. But also this one I use a lot. I probably use this a lot more than most people. And that is to simply flash the shapes in the current layer, which helps me make sure I know what is in each of my layers. So I'll just show you quickly how this works. If I click on this, it's just doing a little flash here to show me that, hey, this design in the middle here is on that red layer that I had selected. Now, of course, another important step in setting up your layers is dialing in your power and speed settings. And I've already done that for this project just to keep things concise in this video. But if that's something that you struggle with, then you might want to check out my Lightburn starter kit. This is a free set of files that you could get to help you with your own power and speed settings. You could get it by joining my email newsletter, which I'll link to in the description below. So earlier in this video, I showed you how to perfectly align your design using those alignment guides. However, sometimes you'll have a shape or a design that is not perfectly symmetrical, and you may want to make some detail adjustments to it that are outside of the perfect center. And so I want to quickly show you how to do that. What you might know already is that you can make little movements using the arrow keys. So I'm just using the up arrow key on my keyboard, and you can see that that's jumping up and down as a result. However, that is too big of a movement in this case. And so what you might not know is that you, if you hold the command key on a Mac, this is the control key on a PC, and then you use your arrow keys, it makes smaller movements. However, you can take this even one step further and use both the shift and the command key on a Mac, on a PC, this would be shift and control. And then you can make really tiny detail adjustments, which can be really helpful for getting something visually to look just right in the position that you want. And while we're over here, I want to quickly point out trick number six, which is one that you might have heard of, but I still think it's underused. So let's just say that we're still over here in the cuts and layers menu, and then we have a question about something specific that we don't understand in this menu. Well, by just hovering over this section and then on a PC, pressing the F1 key on your keyboard, or if you're on a Mac like me, you would press the function or FN key, and then the F1 key, it is going to automatically open the official Lightburn documentation page specific to that section that you were hovering over. And I know what you're thinking, documentation sounds super boring and maybe not even helpful, but Lightburn's documentation happens to be very, very good. In fact, they've done things like take screenshots that are actually clickable. So if you have a question about mode in this layers menu, for example, you can actually hover over that, click on it, and it's going to jump you right down to that section of the page. And so the next time you have a question about Lightburn that's really specific, it might be worth exploring the Lightburn documentation a little bit. All right, so we're back over here in Lightburn with our project, and now we actually need to make a copy of this blue circle outline, because remember, we're making two layers for this project, a back black layer and a front white layer, which means we're going to be using two different materials, and so I'm actually going to set this up as basically two jobs on our laser. But in order to do that while still keeping everything in the same file, there's a few approaches that you can use, but I'm going to show you one that can be really helpful, especially if you're doing a layered project like this one. So I'm going to go ahead and create a copy of this blue circle outline. And if we preview this, let's see what happens if we don't change anything else. You can see that both parts of our design now are being sent to the preview and thus later the laser, but that's actually not what we want because remember we have multiple layers and we want each part of this to be cut out of a different color of material. So there are a few different ways you can work around this. You could put the new circle on its own layer, but if you just think for a second about like a larger, more complex design that has a lot of pieces, then you might not actually want to do that because then you would end up with a lot of different layers to manage. And you might even have a project that's so complex that there are not enough layers in Lightburn in order to to set it up in that way. And so if you have that type of situation, then a trick that you can use is a little setting called cut selected graphics. Turn this little toggle box on in the laser menu, and then whatever you select inside of the workspace will be the only thing that gets sent to the laser. So if we look at the preview now with only this part of the design on the left selected, watch what happens. We're now only getting that part of the design and not what we had on the right side, which is the other circle. For trick number eight, I'll start with something that you might already know, which is the fact that you can actually customize the layout in Lightburn to suit your preferences or your workflow. So for example, let's just say that you wanted to take this laser menu and put it in a more prominent location because you know you're going to be using that all of the time. You can click on that header and drag it to a new location, for example, over here on the left-hand side, and then that can just be the new position of that menu. Or for example, if you know these options down here are ones that you don't use that much, you could click and drag this to a less prominent location and basically customize the space to your heart's content. There are also uh, menus here. So if I right click on this header, there's a list of menus that you can check or uncheck to hide or display these menus in various tabs. 
You may have known all of that, but the thing about doing this is that sometimes we can get a little bit carried away. We might lose a menu, and this is something that I've gotten questions about in the past. And if that happens to you, there's a really easy thing that you can do in Lightburn to restore everything to the default position in Lightburn, and that's by going to Window, Reset to Default Layout. So if you ever get carried away, you can just go Window, Reset to Default, and get the original layout inside of Lightburn back. So now if you look at our project in Lightburn, you might notice that it's a cut only. But as you probably know, a lot of laser projects also involve an engraving. And so what I want to quickly show you now is a little trick that you can use that's really fast to do, but can actually save you quite a lot of time in the engraving time of the project. So now what I'm going to do is use my material library to assign my engraving settings to this little logo design so that you can see in the preview pane that the estimated runtime for this engraving is about four minutes and 48 seconds. And then I'm just going to apply a super, super quick, like two second change. And you'll see that we'll get some time savings as a result. I'm just going to highlight these and use the period key short cut that we talked about earlier to rotate this by 90 degrees. And then my updated preview is giving us a time estimate now of about four minutes and 21 seconds. With just that little change, we're saving about 7% in runtime. But that's actually just one of eight different time saving tips that can save you as much as 73% on your overall engraving runtime. And I cover that in another video. So if you want to check that out, you can go and click on the little card that's here on screen. But no, I didn't forget. I did also actually finish this project we've been working on. And here is the finished result. So thanks again for watching. And I hope to see you in that other video. Bye now.